this is an example of re-expressing data for a histogram. It um, comes out of a problem that I did for a previous video about sizes of vineyards. Uh, it's from Bach, Velman, and DeVoe, like most of these uh, videos are. Um, and what you see, I don't have the book on, on the um, screen, but I have the equivalent histogram on the calculator. When you look at the sizes of these vineyards, this is 36 vineyards of various sizes in acres from 5 to 251. We see this histogram, and it's, it's meaningful. It, it, you can see that it's very skewed to the right, and most of the vine vineyards are, are small, and then a few of them are a bit bigger. But um, it's very hard to get a sense of like center and spread for a histogram like this. And they talk about in the book how often re-expressing the data is a good idea in that sense. And even more basically, um, when you have numbers that vary over multiple orders of magnitude, an order of magnitude just means a factor of 10. It's going from 5 up through past 50 to 250. So the ratio of these guys is a really big number. Um, it's really hard to, to compare such a range. And there's a, a tool that's exactly designed for that, which is logarithms. It's exactly designed for any kind of data, not just in statistics, that varies over many orders of, or at least a few and, and often many orders of magnitude. And it tends to equalize those data and make them easier to understand. And one of the things that they don't talk about, I didn't see them talking about in the book, um, is logarithms are all about ratios instead of differences. Okay, and I want to go ahead and just go ahead and plug this into the log and then talk about um, what that means, what that slogan means. So how would we do it on the calculator? Okay, so first of all, I, um, this raw data, I actually invented this raw data to sort of re reverse engineer the example. They didn't give us the raw data in the original version of the vineyard pro problem. But suppose this were the raw data. I made, made sure that it did match the histogram in the text, which was a problem nine in chapter four. Um, and let's go ahead and put that into the calculator. So I've already put that, entered that into the calculator. Uh, you would go to stat and edit, and then enter it into L1. And so you can see in this L1, I've got this list of data, 36 entries of the, all these numbers here, okay? Um, and then that's what I use to make this histogram. Well, how do you make, how do you re-express the data? It's pretty easy. You just go to the command line, and then I've actually got it already up there, but I'll just do it again. You take the logarithm, and I'm going to take the log to the base 10, which is the LOG, not the LN. Um, and there's a reason for that, just that it's more convenient. I'll talk about that in a minute. Of, and then use second one to do L1 and then do store into, just the arrow, and then L2. There's probably other ways to do it, but that's the way I, I want to do it. And that just means that L2 now gets the log of L1. If we go to stat edit, we now see that L2 has these numbers that are these funky numbers. They're not integers. Logs are a little bit complicated numerically. But what we can see is they start out less than 1. And the important thing about the log to the base 10 is that log base 10 of 10 is one. Remember, it's one less than the number of digits needed to express the number. It's the way they say it in the book. And that's a good way to think about it. Um, so 10 and 11 and 13, they need two digits. So they have logs of one and a little bit. And if we go way down to the big, big entries, 107, that needs three digits. So you take one away. And that's going to be two point something for the log. And the biggest one is 2.4, just about, uh, for the two fifth, the big the big uh, vineyard there. So it's between 2.4 and then down to, what was it, 0 0.6 or something was the smallest one, where it was 5, yeah, 0 0.7. OK. So um, now we can just go ahead and go back to stat plot and just change the L1. I can just do second 2 to get L2 in there. Now if I graph it, it's not going to look real good because I haven't changed the window. Remember. It's very, very rare that you press this button first. You would either go to the window and change it by hand, or maybe do a zoom, 9. OK, so now we've let it do, do zoom stat to automatically change, choose the, the bins. Well, it's nice to know what the heck those bins mean. But that's not a bad place to start. Now let's tweak it by hand by going to window. OK, let's say x min just to be a nice simpler number. Let's say uh, 0.5. And then let's say the bin widths to be, again, simple as a quarter. It's just a little smaller than what they had. So that's going to be uh, more bins, maybe fewer things in each bin. 
Um, and then let's say, just so that it, the numbers work out nicely, 2.75. So we've just scooched out the x-min and the x-max a little bit, but haven't changed them radically, and didn't change the x-scale much. And now let's go back to graph. Okay, let's count how many bins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And none of the, not many of the bins are super, super small. Most of them have more than one thing in them. And so this looks like a pretty good histogram, okay? And so now remember, this is 0.25, sorry, this is 0.5, so that's 0.75, 1, 1.25, 1 1.5, 1 1.75, 2, 2.25, 2.5. Now, of course, those are the logarithms. Those are kind of the digit counter, like how many uh, digits would do these numbers have minus 1. So we've got some farms down here between where the log is between 0.5 and 1, where you just need a basically a single digit number. That's these guys, okay? Then you've got the bulk where you need a two digit number to describe the size of the farm, of the vineyard, and then a few up here where you need a three digit number, especially this guy up here, okay? So what do we notice, okay? Much more symmetrical, or symmetric, whichever you want to call it. Much more symmetric, okay? Um, and it looks, now this one looks like unimodal uh, pretty much, maybe this is a kind of a little bit of a mode. Um, I don't know, I don't usually count things that peak up just a little bit, but maybe, maybe bimodal could be, we could defend that, but just say it's not a very big peak, okay. Um, and the spread, let's look at the, the spread, let's look at these issues of symmetry and spread, because that's going to bring in this issue of ratios instead of differences. So for example, if you wanted to say this is fairly symmetric, um, one way to do that would be to say, look at what looks like the center, which is where the log is, let's see, what was it, 0.5, 1.5 1, 1 to 1.75, okay? Um, and you could talk about, if we go a certain distance to the right, to the right or left, I get similar results, although this guy is a bit of a hump here, okay? So, for example, if I just go one bin to the left or right, I'm getting similar, similar heights, not identical, of course, but similar heights, and that's a, a measure of the symmetry. Or if I go one, two, three to the right, or one, two, three to the left, somewhat similar heights. Um, that's very different from the uh, unreexpressed picture we had before. But what does it mean on a log graph? Well, let's say if I go one, two, three bins to the right, or one, two, three bins to the left, does that mean that if I add a certain number of acres, I get a similar amount of, of vineyards to if I subtract? Well, that's not the case, okay? So the symmetry, or the, the rough symmetry, um, if I move, let's say, three bins right or left from peak, similar number of counts, not the same, but similar number of counts in each bin. So what does that mean? move three bins right or left. Remember each bin, let's look at the window again, that's the scale is the, width, the bin size, 0 0.25, okay. So each bin is I add or subtract, subtract 0.25 from the logarithm of the size. So for example, adding 0.25 to log of size, fundamental thing about how logs work is if I add a number to the logarithm, that means that's equivalent to multiplying the size by the number 10, let's put it in math mode, 10 to the 0.25, which I don't need to do by hand, I can calculate that. So the great thing about logarithms is adding or subtracting to the logarithm is really a replacement for multiplying. So multiply, like the ratio of two things, is going to be this number, so a little less than two. So what that says, if I go back to the picture, when I compare this bin to this bin next to it, I'm not adding a certain number to the, the acreage, um, I'm multiplying the acreage by a number a little less than two and three bins is going to be, um, that means I add 0.75 to log of size, or in other words, I multiply size by um, 
10 to the 0 0.75. And I'll have it calculate that. That's about 5-ish. Uh, That's about 5.6. Okay. So these bins here, this one here, is about the, sort of a, a middle size a average vineyard. And if I go three bins to the right, I'm looking at vineyards that are five times as big. Or if I go to the left, I'm looking at vineyards that are five times as small. So it's the terms of about, it's about the ratio. So this is the ratio between the sizes in these bins separated by three bins. While we're at it, Let's actually figure out where this center is. I probably should have done that at first. The center is where log size is around, well, let's see, what was it? 0 0.5, 1, 1 point, about 1.5 to 1.75. Let's pick something in the middle, about 1.6. OK. And so that means the size, let me put a little punctuation here. So size is approximately. 10 to the 1.6, and that's about 40, OK? So this is saying the typical, in terms of log size, in terms of measuring things by ratios, the typical farm is around 40, uh, which is interesting because that's kind of half, almost exactly halfway through the list when you put them in increasing order. It's going to be called the median. So that's interesting. So the typical farm here, in terms of this re-expression, is about 40 acres. And then if I increase that by a factor of 5, that's going to about 200 acres. That's this big one. Or if I decrease that by a factor of 5, that's about this guy that's about 8 acres. And so it's saying that in, if you actually measure these things in terms of ratios, it's, it's pretty symmetrical. The average farm is 40, and there's one farm that's five times as big, and there's only a few farms that are five times as small. And it doesn't seem nearly as skewed anymore when we measure everything in terms of ratios.